Okay, uh, so let's begin uh, today's webinar. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Isha here, and I'll be the host today. And we have our guest speaker, Dr. P. S. Sethi, with us, who will be um, delivering a great lecture uh, in this uh, webinar. I welcome um, Dr. P. S. Sethi on this. Uh, doctor, can you please uh, put your camera on? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Good evening, Isha. Good evening, good evening, doctor. Yeah. How, 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 how was your day? Well, it was a hectic day, being the last day of the week. But anyhow, yes, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll enjoy a great weekend after this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, okay. Um, so. Yeah, so Dr. Sethi will uh, uh, t uh, tell us about understanding of uh, temporomandibular joint disorder, and I would love to give you all a little bit of introduction about him. So Dr. Sethi completed his graduation from Manipal College in the year 1999-2000, uh, and then he started his own private practice in 2002 named Donshire Dental Care, which uh, he is still practicing, and it's a very successful dental practice in Kolkata. Um, just adding on to some of his uh, achievements, he has, in 2006, uh, he has done cosmetic dentistry by Smile Care, New York University of Dentistry. In 2014, TMJ Harmony International Mini Residency Program from MICD from Thamsit University of Bangkok. And uh, in 2015, he has uh, done a laser education, laser education, International by Universal, University of California, that is uh, UCSF in uh, San Francisco. And he has done uh, numerous uh, number of courses uh, to you know, enhance his skill. And he's a great dental practitioner. Uh, and uh, I think I'm going to just leave it to him now to start with the webinar. OK, on, on to you, doctor. Thanks, uh, Isha, for the introduction. Uh, so. Good evening, friends. Uh, I will start sharing my slide first. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I hope uh, my yeah. So good evening, uh, friends. I'm so sorry to to interrupt, Doctor Seti. Yeah, to all the attendees, I would just like to say, if you have any questions in between, kindly put those questions in Q and A section, and uh, I will help them get you the answers of all at the end of the webinar. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Isha. Uh, so good evening, friends. I am Doctor Prabhjit Singh Seti, as uh, been introduced from Kolkata. And we are having a lovely monsoon session over here every day. And uh, hope all of you are enjoying and are safe during this time. So a brief introduction, which you already have heard, out of which uh, I would like to put stress on. Uh, I did my occlusal and FMR training with Dr. Peter Dawson uh, in Florida in the year 2013, followed by an TMJ Harmony training in Thammasat University. I even uh, specialize in T-scan, uh, which I had event training with Dr. Robert Kirsten. And at present, I am specializing in uh, prime scan, CEREC dentistry, and a KOL for Sirona. So the topic for today, uh, before starting, I would uh, like to thank uh, God Almighty and all my mentors with whose blessings I am here and whatever I know is because of them. So we are going to discuss scope of TMD for general dentists. So TMD over here refers to, as all of you know, temporomandibular disorder. Before starting with the subject, I would like to just put a question which everybody can answer in the chat and we can look on it later, okay? So the question is, how many of you are by choice, and how many of you are proud to be a dentist? Okay, just answer yes and or no in your chat box and leave it there till we'll look at it at the end. So I was also a general dentist. I started my practice in the year 2001. And uh, like all of the doctors, I was happy for a few years doing filling, root canals, extractions, caps, crowns, bridges, etc. And one fine day, uh, which was not too early, maybe after about seven to eight years of regular practice, 
when I started thinking that what is it I'm doing as a dentist, uh, as a doctor, uh, means I was literally bored of doing the same thing day in and day out, just like a mechanic, you know, see a cavity, clean it, fill it or crown it, see a broken tooth, remove it. And something was bothering me. Uh, there was one more thing when the patient used to come with me with the pain in the joint or pain in the, you know, the neck pain or chew, pain while chewing. I had no answer for that. Trust me, the patient came to me considering that I would give him relief. And when I was not able to give him relief, uh, it was, I really used to feel for it. Like, why couldn't I do the treatment for it? For every case, I used to just tell them to take some muscle relaxant or, uh, you know, it's a TMJ problem, go to the surgeon and et cetera, et cetera. And I trust, I believe uh, most of you must be facing the same problems. The other problem which I used to face was, you know, uh, when I used to do a filling, a very good filling, class two especially, or a crown after an RCT, uh, well-prepared margins and everything. But the patient used to come, some, most of them, you know, with a fractured filling maybe a fractured crown uh, with the tooth. So why? Or when a patient, when I used to deliver a crown, I was in you know, no idea which spot to reduce, which mark not to reduce. So all these were questions which kept you know, haunting me, poking me, and all this give rise to my inquisitiveness. And finally, I decided one day that I should do something. And this... Uh, found uh, I found the green signal for this when I once was visiting my orthodontist clinic and over there I saw a book of Dr. Peter Dawson, his uh, functional occlusion. So I asked him that, can I borrow your book and can I read it for a few days? It was after reading that book when, you know, I started understanding a subject occlusion, which I used to always run away from. And I never thought that I will be speaking on TMD and occlusion one day in my life. But trust me, that book made me made my concept so clear that I decided that I have to go to that person and understand, you know, face to face. So this is how all it started. And trust me, uh, as a general dentist, we can treat TMDs and we can do many more things. All we need to know is the basics of everything. So are we just dentists? programmed for five years to spend the rest of a life to just drill, fill, clean, and pull out tooth? Is it that this is what we are supposed to do? But this is done by all of them, isn't it? They also do the same thing. They do the filling, they do cleaning, they give dentures, they give crowns, everything is done by them. So how different are we them, from them? Definitely we are different because we have studied more than them. And whatever we are studied, it makes us not only a dentist, but the physician of masticatory system. Yeah, we all as dental surgeons are uh, the physicians of the masticatory system. And to be one, we just need to know the basics of our masticatory system. And that, that is what we are here today evening to understand, a very basic understanding because in one hour or one and a half first time, I can't explain you the entire TMD. You know, it takes at least four to six sessions to explain it but I can at least instill a basic thought or seed in your mind so that you can, you know, start thinking on that grounds. So what is TMD? TMD is actually a temporomandibular disorder. And to understand this, we need to know some things about the TMJ, a very basic understanding about the TMJ, which I trust most of you know it. So I would just go through the, you know, nomenclatures of what are there in a TMJ. So ginglimo arthrodial joint. Why ginglimo arthrodial joint? Because our TMJ has both a rotation and a transitional movement. Articular disc, you know the articular disc, which is there in between the condyle and the fossa. The major ligaments in our TMJ, which is the capsular, discal, collateral, the accessory ligaments, which is the spinomandibular, stylomandibular ligaments, and the mom, the, the muscles of mastication. These muscles of mastication are of two types, the elevator muscles and the depressor muscles. Okay, The elevator muscles comprise of the masseter, temporalis, medial pterygoid, superior lateral pterygoid. 
And the depressor muscles are mainly the inferior lateral pterygoid, the digastric muscles, which are the accessory muscles. So now coming to TMJ disorders. TMJ disorders can be classified into three categories. The masticatory muscle disorder, the structural intracapsular disorder, and the conditions that mimic the temporomandibular disorder, which is not actually a TMD, but they mimic that sort of pain, which can be an irreversible pulpitis due to caries, can be the inflammatory disorder of the joint or anything else. So now when a patient comes to us with a pain, okay, generally we used to, or act, I used to think that it is a joint problem and the patient has to go to some specialist and I can't treat it. But to make a very basic explanation on this, when we bite, okay, when a normal individual bites, all our teeth come into occlusion, and that is called a centric occlusion, centric relation. And that time, our TMJ, our joint is supposed to sit in its most comfortable position in the fossa. So what happens to the muscle at that time? All of them get relaxed. This is the natural phenomenon which should happen. Most of the time, what happens is due to some discrepancy, mainly it is an iatrogenic cause in which we give a cap or we do a filling or a ortho treatment is done. When the patient goes to a natural bite, when he tries to bite, there is an interference in the posterior teeth, which does not allow the individual to close such that the, the, the joint goes into its most comfortable position. So what happens at that time? The jaw gets displaced and it closes in a different position where the teeth definitely meet each other, but the muscles are not yet relaxed, okay? So now when the muscles are not relaxed, what will happen? Suppose uh, if I go to the gym and every day I work out my biceps, what will happen after the third or the fourth day? My biceps will be paining badly and the fifth day I will not be able to lift my arm even, isn't it? Now. Now just think that if in that patient, the muscle is getting stretched 24 hours, what will happen to that muscle? It will definitely get fatigued. It is hyperactive. There is lactic acid accumulation and the muscle becomes obviously tender. And this is what leads to the pain in the patient joint, not the joint, in the temporomandibular area, which we think it's a joint, but actually it's an occlusion muscle disorder. Why we call it an occlusion muscle disorder? because the faulty occlusion, that is the interference, is causing not letting the joint sit in its comfortable position and causing the muscle to be tensed, okay? So this is what is also known as masticatory muscle disorder. And majority of the conditions which come to us are masticatory muscle disorders. Many of times, so I'm, I'm just talking about the clinical points and the clinical aspect, which I have experienced and I'm sharing it with you so that it becomes very clear, okay? Many a times you must have seen a patient comes, he has a healthy tooth, or maybe it's a root canal treated tooth, which you have done very well. All the lateral uh, canals are filled. MB2 is also filled in upper first molar. You have given him a perfect anatomical crown. After a month, the patient comes to you and he says that the tooth is paining, okay? And you take an x-ray, there is no pathology, there is no periapical radiolucency, the root canal is absolutely fine, the crown is fine, but still the patient complains of pain. So what do you do? Or if the patient comes with a natural tooth, which has no caries and nothing, but still he says that the tooth is paining. And yes, it, the tooth is tender on percussion when you check, but there is no radiological evidence of any pathology. So in such cases, what... I used to do when in the beginning, when I had no clue about occlusion, you know, the pain is so bad that we eventually turn up doing intentional root canal. But the treatment for this is different. When you understand occlusion, when you understand TMJ, you need to check whether there are any interference forces on that particular tooth or that particular crown. And most of the time there are. And the moment you relieve those extra forces, which are not supposed to be there, the problem is solved. So that is the magic of occlusion understanding. So this is what is masticatory muscle disorder. The second type of TMD or the TMJ disorder is the structural intracapsular disorder. So in this, the joint, the structure inside the capsule of the TMJ, the articular disc, the condylar surfaces, 
they have undergone derangement or changes. What can the changes be? It can be the attrition of the articular surfaces. It can be the most commonly the displacement, which can be a functional displacement of the disc causing clicks, and that also causes pains, okay? So conditions that mimic TMD, I've told about this, the conditions which mimic a TMD pain can be either irreversible pulpitis, it can be the degenerative inflammatory changes of the capsule. So for evaluating a patient for TMD, all the above three factors are to be looked into because when a patient comes to you, it is not that any one factor will be responsible. It might be that in a particular patient, there are two coexisting factors. And most often, yes, it happens. It's always, your disc, disc, uh, disc derangement will always be accompanied by a masticatory muscle response, okay? So first, the patient goes through a masticatory muscle disorder because of the interference in the occlusion, which not cured or not looked into will finally lead to the disc derangement or the structural intracapsular disorder. So it's always coexisting factors. Categories of TMD. So the occlusion muscle disorder with no intracapsular defects, like I said, this is purely because of the interference in the bite, which causes the intracapsular, the pain in the, or the TMD without any intracapsular defect. The intracapsular disorder directly related to occlusal disharmony And the intraocclusal disorder, which are not reversible. There are two types, reversible and irreversible. Because in reversible cases, you can correct the bite, the interference by giving appliances, etc., and it can be reversed, the intracapsular disorder. But there are some intracapsular disorders which cannot be reversed, but they undergo adaptive changes in which the patient doesn't have any symptoms, but they, the structures adapt to this change. And the functioning is comfortable even when we after after the adjustment of the occlusion. Non-adapted intracapsular disorders. So these are the extreme cases in which there is no adaptation taking place and these are looked into with a different sort of treatment. The choice of the treatment and results are related to the category of TMD. So we need to understand what type or what category of TMD is present, the TM disorder is present in the mouth in the oral cavity in the structure. And according to that, we have to select the treatment. Now coming to the three structures, TMJ. Yeah, TMJ is temporomandibular joint, but TMJ is also teeth, muscle, and joint. Okay, that is how I call it, TMJ. Now to make it very simple, how I understood it was, uh, one of my mentors explained it to me in very simple terms. TMJ is a relation similar to the relation between a husband, wife, and the husband's mother. That is the wife's mother-in-law, okay? Now, everybody is smart enough and they've understood what type of relation is there in between three of such people. So in this, what happens? Husband is the teeth, the muscle is the wife, and joint is mostly the mother-in-law, okay? Now, just imagine when there's a tussle between the mother-in-law and the wife. Obviously, the husband is grinded in between. So how will the chain reaction happen? You know, who is going to get affected and how? So the teeth, if it's the husband, will definitely get affected first. If there is no balance or if there is a friction between the three, right? So teeth gets affected first, then gets affected the muscle and finally the joint. So this is how it happens, okay? So the occlusion muscle disorder then leads to the intracapsular defect. So it's easy to remember, TMJ is just like husband, wife, and mother-in-law, okay? So coming to the mechanism of deformation. Now, this is a simple diagram, which is taken from Dr. Peter Dawson's book. What happens if you see over here, when the patient, the, I hope you can see my pointer. This is the case in which the patient is closing in centric relation. When he closes in centric relation, there is an interference. Whatever I explained is just being explained over here with the diagram. There is an interference in the posterior teeth over here, right? Now, what happens when this interference is there? It 
does not let the condyle sit in its most comfortable position, resulting in the muscle to be act always activated and it doesn't rest, especially the inferior lateral pterygoid, which is the most uh, important muscle responsible for most of the problems. So now what happens, this interference sends, sends a proprioceptive signal to the brain and the brain in turn gives all these feedbacks. What happens, the muscle gets compressed and there is deformation in all of these links depending upon the teeth. First, we see the teeth. The teeth will show signs of occlusal diseases, hypermobility, excessive wear, migration, abrasion, ab fractions, cusp fracture, okay? So the symptoms will be pain on biting, just like I said, when the patient sometimes comes with a natural tooth with no caries, nothing, but he complains of pain on biting, he complains of hypersensitivity, even in spite of a root canal done, the patient says, is that my sensation ho hai, you know? Many a time you are confused. Yeah, I have done the best root canal. My and still the patient is saying hypersensitivity. This is the cause. So check the occlusion for that tooth. Definitely there is something going wrong, and that tooth has an interference. The moment you correct it, the hypersensitivity goes away. The joints. How do the joints get affected? The disc derangement. There is a click. There are structural deformations. Symptoms are again pain and discomfort. The patient complains of pain on closing. There is discomfort on chewing. The muscles, the muscles, since they are fatigued already, they are always hyperactive, they are not resting, they will show reduced range of motion, deviated path of motion. Reduced range of motion, normal opening of mouth about 40 to 40, uh, 50 millimeters will not be there, the patient will be having restricted opening. There will be a deviation, most of the time you ask the patient to open, they will deviate to the left, they are all through the right, depending upon which joint, which side joint is affected. Okay, sometime now there is, he might go open, they, he might deflect and go back to the normal process. Yeah, so there are two types. One is permanent deviation, one is a deflection and back to normal position. So this is how the mechanism of deformation progresses. Okay. So always remember that most TMD pain is not a TMJ pain, but most TMD pain is masticatory muscle pain triggered by occlusal interferences. Just like I had said before, that most of the time it is just the occlusal muscle disorder and what we need to check is the occlusion and the pain can be treated, the TMD can be treated without venturing into the joint. Most of the time the joint is always healthy, which I never knew. I always thought the problem is with the joint, okay? And it will be a complex treatment and refer the patient to somebody else. But no, we can, if we know this and we can diagnose this, we can treat it as a dentist, as a general dentist, okay? So diagnosing for a TMD. So how do we diagnose whether the patient is having this temporomandibular disorder is because of the occlusal muscle disorder or it is because of an intracapsular defect or derangement. So for this, the most important thing to find out is whether the TMJs or the joints are healthy or not. And how do we come to know that the joints are healthy? These are the five points. One is the load test. Load test is a specific type of test which we teach in depth when we take the session or course. It's very difficult to explain the entire thing right now in such a short time, but a load test to be in short, I'll tell you the load test is when we put load to our jaws, okay? When they are closing in centric, there will be no discomfort to the patient. Why? Because the condyles are in the most comfortable position. And when this happens, we apply load and the patient is not uncomfortable or in discomfort. It means the joint is absolutely healthy. Second, the range of motion and path of motion. Range of motion and path of motion, if it is absolutely okay, you measure it, then obviously the muscles are all fine. There is no problem in the, uh, the joint. You know, If the joint has a displacement or a clicking sound, there will be compromised range of motion. Wiggling to be observed. What is wiggling? You must have seen when you ask the patient to open the mouth like this, when they open, they start, you know, there's a short of shiver and then they open the mouth. So definitely this shows that the disc displacement is there and it's a sign that there is a disc displacement, functional displacement, which is reversible and that is what is causing this. Radiography, 
by taking X, the radiographs, the OPGs of the TMJ open and closed bilaterally, unilaterally, you can find out the structure of the condyle. If there is a lot of uh, attrition of the articular surfaces, the condyle will be flattened. Uh, if there is uh, disc derangement, disc displacement, the disc always is pulling the, you know, the, the muscle is pulling, uh, always having a front uh, forward pull on the condyles, you will find there's a spike, a beak-like projection on the condyle. So all these are to be noticed in the radiograph. Anterior bite plane for deprogramming. Now, this is a very uh, quick test to analyze whether the problem is happening inside the joint or it is just a muscle problem. What happens when the patient comes to you with severe pain? Okay, suppose the patient comes with severe pain and he can't open, he can't chew, while opening, it's paining. While chewing, it's paining. You know, it's acutely tender. And we think that it's the joint has acute tenderness, acute problem. But how to rule out whether it's just the muscle which is hyperactive and causing? We give an anterior bite plane to the patient then and there. You can either, either make it in a cold cure from canine to canine. Okay. You give it such in such a way that when the patient bites, there is no posterior teeth contacting. So what will happen in this? How does it help? Suppose the patient has a posterior interference and that is causing the muscle to be triggered always and not letting it rest, not letting it relax. The moment you give him an anterior bite plane with a cold cure or even a putty, you can give him even in a putty, you can even place two cotton rolls on either side near the premolar corner and ask the patient to bite. That will disocclude the posterior teeth. The interference will be relieved and the muscle will relax Within half an hour or time when the patient is sitting outside, he can tell you that the pain has come down to some extent and you can diagnose a differential diagnosis that this is an occlusion muscle disorder and there is no role of any joint or intracapsular defect. Apart from this, you ask questions specific for teeth, muscles and joints to the patient. Specific to the joints, you can ask the patient whether you hear any clicking sound when you open or close whether you any time had a locked jaw for muscles, you can ask the patient any, for tenderness. You can palpate the muscles for tenderness. For teeth, you can ask the patient whether they are having hypersensitivity, mobility, etc. So, ruling out whether it's occlusion muscle disorder or intracapsular problem is by verifying that the TMJ is healthy. Now, by diagnosing the TMJ, we can decide whether the pain is due to muscle and occlusal dysharmony or it's due to an intracapsular problem. The other diagnostic tool, which needs, uh, sorry, the spelling is wrong. Okay. The other diagnostic tool needed is mounted casts. So now there's the other way to be more sure of finding out any interference in your bite is to take measure, uh, take the impressions, make models for the patient take a centric relation record, take a Facebook transfer and mount your models on a semi-adjustable articulator in that bite. The entire bite in front of you is in a 3D concept and you can see both labially, buccally, lingually, palately, where and how is the interference happening, okay? You can point it out and in the, on the articulator, you can equilibrate or remove those interferences and check how the bite is improving. Okay, so this is also an important diagnosing tool. So, suppose now we have understood about the occlusal muscle disorder. Okay, the occlusal muscle disorder happens because of any interference and how we can treat it is by removing that interferences and relaxing the muscles. If in case of uh, the, uh, the condyle disc complex, CDC is a condyle disc complex, how the derangement cascading effect happens, okay? So it's a normal healthy joint. Now suppose there is a macro or a micro trauma. Macro trauma is definitely a trauma from a blow or an accident and injury. Micro trauma is, one of the examples of micro trauma is the constant force which is there happening, which can be due to the occlusal interference, not corrected will gradually lead to the condyle disc complex derangement, okay? So what happens is constant microtrauma will lead to loss of normal CDC functions. The abnormal translatory movement between disc and condyle. Normally what happens when we open, 
okay beyond the rotational movement that is beyond 20 21 millimeters the condyles move forward and downward and the disc moves along with it okay they both move in harmony but because of these micro trauma or any other reasons the disc and the condyle will not move in harmony and they will move separately okay and this is what will cause the posterior border of the disc to become thinner and gradually the disc will get functionally displaced causing the click the disc also apart from displacement if it is not corrected beyond displacement it happens is dislocation which is a permanent dislocation of the disc which may be reduced or may not be reduced reduced means it can be brought back to the normal position it might not be bad by the normal position so these are the condyle disc complex derangements which happen so i'm just discussing it in brief because, because this is a vast topic and if we have to go in depth to understand each and everything how the click happens what is the reciprocal click how the clicks can be prevented and etc okay the treatment of tmd so we have come to understand in a temporomandibular disorder which is happening because of the occlusal muscle disorder the main culprit is a uh, interference this interference doesn't allow our condyle to sit in the most comfortable position and as a result we close in a the teeth get contacted contact with each other in a different relationship not the centric relationship okay and this is what causes the muscles to always be hyperactive or activated and leads to the discomfort and pain this part totally is dependent on the cause of the tmd whether it is occlusal muscle disorder or intracapsular defect for occlusal muscle disorder cases occlusal splints are the most common way to treat occlusal equilibration also helps in mild cases just like i said when we mount the diagnostic casts casts on the articulator and we start equilibrating on the articulators this is how we do if the bite gets corrected that is a simple way to treat but in severe cases when the muscles are too fatigued and there is a lot of acute pain we start with splints the occlusal splints okay so how and uh, the process of giving the splint i have shared in brief it is again a very detailed process but to know more for the intracapsular treatments we need to understand in details about the intracapsular derangements classification and treatments depending on the same so to understand the intracapsular treatments we have to there are many classifications of what type of displacement is there you know medial pole lateral pole so that is again a vast topic which we can't deal right now in this so in case of the occlusal muscle disorder which is the majority of times the main problem that is causing the pain okay most of the cases will be because of the occlusal muscle disorder suppose a patient comes to me how do we start how do we do okay first we analyze whether the tmj is healthy or not just like the points the five points which i had discussed once we are sure that the tmj is healthy there is no problem with the tmj we start by recording the centric relation first okay once we record the centric relation we can see where we can feel how the centric relation is recorded centric record is taken is with the biomanual manipulation okay so after that we proceed with the phase bow transfer and then we mount the models on the articulator now accordingly we make a splint occlusal splint which is either given in the maxillary arch or in the mandibular arch mostly it is given in the maxillary arch because of the stability in the maxilla and in some cases those who don't want it in the maxilla because of aesthetics they will we can give them in the mandibular so what does the occlusal splint do the occlusal splint actually will be always made in a centric relation so when the patient will bite after wearing an occlusal splint he will always close in centric relation so actually it's a sort of muscle trainer yeah it always trains the guides the mandible to close in the centric relation which will cause the muscles to relax and that is what we want as soon as the muscles will relax the temporomandibular disorder the pain will gradually come down okay now how the splint should be given hard splint soft splint etc etc it's a detailed discussion but to be in brief always prefer hard splint splint should be given such that when we bite 
all the teeth should be just contacting in centric relation like this. In excursion, lateral excursions, there should always be a canine guide, guided occlusion and there would, should be always a posterior disclusion in anterior guidance. These points have to be always followed, right? And because many people, if, the, if you don't uh, properly check that all the teeth are contacting, there will be supra eruption of the tooth teeth which are not contacting. There will be intrusion of other teeth and this is going to take the entire occlusion for a toss. So you should be very careful and accurate while fabricating a splint, right? So in short, these are the steps for fabricating the splints, the maxillary or mandibular splint, like I said, proper casts needed. The cast should be well uh, poured, no bubbles, nothing. Load test to confirm healthy TMJ. Always perform the load test. This is one of the basic and confirmatory tests to decide the TMJs are healthy. Accurate CR record, centric relation record by the biomanual manipulation. The face board transfer. Cast mounted on semi-adjustable articulator in centric relation. The fabrication of the splint such that all teeth are in contact in centric and there is canine guided disclusion during lateral excursions, right? TMD treatment to be done or not? So definite by a general dentist, okay? Yeah, if you have understood the concept and have decided to take the necessary training for the same, then definitely yes. Out of 10 patients, trust me, seven to eight of them will have occlusion muscle disharmony leading to TMD. And you should start diagnosing from tomorrow or Monday, okay? Those who don't practice on Sunday, definitely on Monday when you go, every OPD, every comprehensive checkup you do, please look for the signs. What are the signs? If a patient is having a TMD problem, there's interference and he's sliding and closing, there will be a general wear pattern of the teeth. Ask the patient various questions, whether you have pain or you get fatigued while chewing for a long time. When you get up in the morning, do you feel fresh? This is a typical question. Ask and I, would, I assure you, 50% of your patients will say, no, I don't feel fresh when I get up. I have headache, I have my jaws hurt, you know, because there is interference and there is definitely the bruxism happening at night also. So look into every patient from tomorrow, from Monday, take, try to do load test, okay? Uh, learn how to do load test, okay? We have sessions for that or wherever you can, try to learn the load test try to do understand how to take centric relation records and try it on all the patients. This is how I learned. There's no specific, after coming from uh, Florida, I didn't have anybody here to, you know, there's no device to tell me that this is how, this is the centric relation, this is the load test, but it is always practice. You know the method, you know the tricks, you keep doing it on all the patients. Don't wait ki jab aega TMD or a patient tab karunga, no. You have to practice, do it for everybody. So load test all the patients. You can check Kiska TMJ is healthy, whose is not, right? So the more you do, the more your fingers will become tactile sensitive. That's, this is the secret how we learned. So yes, it's a practice enhancer, man income generator, definitely. How? Uh, now see, so the over the time I have had patients whom we have treated, they have been to every corner of the country. You do all the all the neurologists, all the neurosurgeons, everybody. They have done MRIs. They have done everything. But trust me, it was just a simple problem of this occlusion, which was not looked into by obviously by the doctors and the dentists too. And the moment we identify that and give them a suitable treatment with a splint or whatever necessary, they are immediately relieved. And this is my, uh, I'm just not saying to, you know, convince you. It is the feedback from my patients. And we have those reviews in our YouTube and everything. So this really works. Initially, to be frank, when I uh, learned this initially with Fresh, um, eight years, seven years back, I also was very skeptical when I was doing it on the patient, you know. I was doing it, uh, whatever I knew to the best uh, of my knowledge and perfection, but in somewhere in my subconscious, you know, I felt ki kaam karega ki nahi karega, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how is it going to work, but it worked and it is still working. And as it started working, I started having confidence. 
okay it does work so so from now on all of us are physicians of the masticatory system and not just dantoga doctor okay we are not just teeth doctor we are responsible for the entire masticatory system it is our field we are here and we can treat many things which we can't think of right another another thing which i would like to share uh many a times you must have heard that being doctors we can treat the lower back pains we can treat shoulder pains we can treat this and that and to some extent yes it is true we can do that okay because our jaw the mandible is the position of this jaw is solely not solely but yeah to a great extent responsible for the posture of our body okay so in case if in case of any a uh, pathology or any tmd or any tmj disorder if our jaw deflects while closing to either left or right the entire posture of the body is compromised okay so suppose my jaw is supposed to close symmetrically in one uh, in in one axis to maintain the posture in case if it deviates and closes okay the body will compensate suppose my jaw closes a bit to the right my hip my uh, lower hip will compensate by rotating to the left to the other side so when it does that there will definitely be an effect on my knees on my heels and a negative cascading effect starts so this is uh, definitely a truth and that our jaw our teeth everything affects to the po the posture to a great extent and we can treat many things which we have never thought of right okay so this is uh, all i have to discuss regarding the scope of tmd for general dentist in a very brief discussion because there is a lot more to be discussed but that cannot be covered in such a short time because it needs a long every topic single topic center regulation takes almost two sessions the equilibration takes almost two sessions so all this is in brief which i have explained and uh, i end my session over here thank you for your valuable time and uh, over to you dr isha thank you so much dr sethi it was uh, it was a great webinar and i hope all the and attendees you know enjoyed and they learned a lot so since uh, uh, dr sethi said that we would actually need lot lots more of uh, you know sessions to actually understand um, joint issues so what we can do is i would like if someone would want to come up and say that you know uh, we would want a workshop so uh, anyone who want to go ahead i mean who wants a workshop on the same topic can uh, drop a yes or anything in the chat box and okay doctor so yeah. there is uh, one question we have uh, that is where to place the split upper jaw or lower jaw or both so ideally uh, no never both is not needed yeah definitely first choice will be the maxilla because maxillary stability is much better but like i mentioned many people would say that i don't want the splint to be visible it should all it should be given the lower if in that case only otherwise the preferred is maxilla and uh, uh, like this splint has to be worn mostly at night depending upon the acuteness of the pain if the pain or the discomfort is really bad you need to prescribe for the day uh, i mean daytime use also but once the patient gets comfortable then you restrict him to use it only at night so then it hardly matters does uh, giving muscle relaxants uh, also helps in this case so what happens when when we do in depth centric relation recording what happens when the patient comes and has fatigued muscle you know the muscle is too stiff to manipulate to record a centric relation then yes we can use muscle relaxants to loosen the muscle so that we can it helps us to record the centric relation apart from that we many a times there are other ways like we use a lucia jig to record a centric relation which helps which makes it easy so muscle relaxation is given for symptomatic relief Okay, and um, fine. Uh, just a moment, doctor. Yeah. 
Okay, there is one more question that is, uh, is ear pain related to TMD? Yes, to some extent it can be related to TMD. Because uh, uh, I would not say that the ear pain is so wholly and solely because of the TMD, but it can be a referred pain. So in that case, always first take the uh, advice from the ENT. And if he rules out any pathology in that, then it can be treated with the TMD appliance. So see, like I said, all these are uh, benefits which you get with your appliance, along with relieving the TMD. Like, uh, I'll tell you two, three cases. I gave the TMD for the patient who had acute pain in the joint. He, uh, she never used, uh, was able to open the mouth to chew even the soft food. That appliance treated the problem which she had for chewing, but along with it, she said, she gave a feedback that my vertigo is also treated. But I'm not saying that I have given the appliance to treat the vertigo. That is just an additional benefit which might have come. Right. All right. Uh, so another question is that, uh, can you list some books to learn TMD diseases and treatment? Yes, sure. Uh, Okerson. Okay, Okerson is, a, the author is Okerson. Uh, if you just Google it, you'll get that book. And obviously, Peter Dawson's Functional Occlusion. These two books are good enough. Because there are many books, the more books you read, there are many different school of thoughts. I would advise, see, uh, when I did Occlusion, there were many uh, people who had different opinions. There are many school of thoughts for Occlusion. So what I decided was that I need to reach to one God. God is one. Whether you go through the temple, you go through a mosque, go through the Gurdwara or Christ or the church. So you have to reach to one God. So keep one way of reaching God. Don't visit all the religious places. So trust one school of thought and follow it. Otherwise, you'll always be confused. Right, right. Absolutely right. So I think we are pretty much uh, done with the question answer session. Anyone uh, has any other questions? So, uh, you know, you can just type it down <clears throat> in the Q and A session. Okay. So it seems like um, a lot of people are interested in the workshop, Dr. Sethi, and mm -hmm. uh, I think we will definitely go ahead with the workshop very soon. Sure. All right, so uh, to all the attendees, uh, I would actually uh, like to share my screen now and uh, uh, tell you a little bit about Dentist Channel Online and the upcoming workshops we'll be having. Yeah, so I hope you all can uh, see my screen. So Dentist Channel Online is basically a dental digital company where we promote doctors. We want to promote dentistry in India. And uh, uh, as Dr. Sethi said, we are not only the Dardoga doctors. And um, so here we provide uh, doctors and you all with a platform where you all can come and learn and the young doctors and the already established dental practitioners can come and they can share their knowledge so that you know, we can grow uh, towards a better dental empire um, uh, in future. So, uh, and then this is uh, the number you can uh, save and you can just send uh, with your, if you send a WhatsApp text on this number with your name so that you can get the messages on the upcoming workshops with us you're gonna have, okay? Further, uh, I would, uh, yes, so I'll tell you about the upcoming dental workshop. So this is the upcoming workshop we, that we have uh, right at seven o'clock today with Dr. Gagandeep uh, Garewal on facial aesthetic part one. And we are having part two on 17th this month. This is the webinar uh, for tomorrow with Dr. Sakshi Kataria on tele-dentistry. Then this is uh, with Dr. Shubhajit Suri on Botox. Well, this is the part two of facial aesthetics. <clears throat> and these are the various other webinars uh, we are gonna have in future. 
So uh, whenever you want to go ahead and register for the webinars or you want to confirm what our webinars are coming up, number one, you can just uh, text us on WhatsApp with the number I displayed. I can display it again. Okay, so text us on this number with your name. And secondly, you can go on our website and you can check all the dental events, all the webinars which are coming up, which also includes the workshops. Um, along with that, I would... Uh, request or suggest everyone uh, to be a part of a uh, prime member of uh, dentist channel online so that you could be provided with the e-certificates so if you want to join as a prime member you can straight away go on our website and register and that membership is valid for the whole year so in in, in whole year when uh, whenever you attend the webinars or whatever webinars you attend you will be given an e-certificate mm. Yeah, so this is our website that is www.dentistchannel.online and um, you can go ahead and uh, be a prime member with us so that you can attend all uh, our webinars. Okay, I have, I still have a few questions which has come up. Dr. Sethi, yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so there is one question uh, that can DMD be confused with spondylitis? Yes, it can be. Because, uh, like I said, the muscle fatigue, our jaw is connected with the even the sternocleidomastoid, and it can be most of the time. So you should analyze. I mean, you should see first for whether the interference, like whatever I said, you know, all the five things have to be recorded. Uh, I can't hear you, uh, Dr. Isha. You are I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. So is TMG pain and third molar eruption interrelated? Um, see, for for the third molar pain, you have to uh, see what, where, what is the stage of eruption of the third molar, whether it's completely impacted. If it's completely impacted or just 20-10% uh, visible with pericoronitis, no, I don't think the TMJ is responsible. I mean, the TMD is associated with it. That pain is completely a pericoronitis situation. But yes, if the third molar is erupted and that too buckly or inclined mesial, uh, you know, it's the mesioangular impaction, you know, and it's interfering in the bite, when you check for the centrifugation, yes, it will be responsible for the occlusion muscle disorder. So it depends upon the state of eruption. I mean, the level of eruption of the third molar. All right, perfect. So I hope uh, all the questions are answered. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. Seti, for coming uh, as a guest speaker with us. And you have delivered an amazing uh, thank you. You know, thank webinar. Thank you to all the participants for being you know, patient listeners on a Saturday evening. They loved it. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.